Good morning guys, what's up? It's uh, it's me, me again, because it's just me. And we're gonna talk about some things because I don't have my car, Kent doesn't have his car, but there are some changes that you guys should know about. I'm gonna lead you on and ramble on for another 20 seconds just to make sure that you guys are paying attention. And if you haven't hit that little bell button, besides the subscribe button, hit that one, because you'll get a notification when I upload a new video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should probably subscribe because why aren't you subscribed? Because I'm pretty cool and stuff, and send nudes. What's going on guys? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna do things again. So I have my notes here again. Wrong side. And we're gonna talk about some things. So, first things first. This is what I have. That's a cat. So, oh, it's upside down. I'll go this way. Here you go, sad face. Sad face thumbnail. Anyways, this is my Platinum Sport PS2000 Haltech ECU. Um, it is a standalone ECU. It's like a generic one. And then you have a car specific patch harness. So it'll take these two plugs and then this is the factory super harness. So I do plan on upgrading this. The cat's eating, can you hear him? Go, 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 stop eating. You're not allowed to eat while I make videos. Go. <laughs> okay, anyways, um, I do plan on upgrading this ECU. It's not a bad ECU, it's just, it's getting kind of old. Like it's still capable of doing everything that you need it to do but I have my reasons and here we go. So first thing, I'm a huge fan of getting an ECU that the tuner likes. So that's one of the main things everyone always replies with um, when someone asks which is the best ECU to get. They always refer to you to contact your tuner and ask them which ECU would they prefer. So in my case, I'm gonna be going to AFR Auto Works to get my tuning done. The same place that's doing the cage right now. Cut the clip. Or I should at least check it. Like, still got a ways to go, I think, but let's give it a shot. They're gonna hook me up with a pretty good deal on the ECU that they use. Um, what they offer is a Link ECU, and the cat's fucking around again. America. So what they do offer is a Link ECU. I don't have one on hand, but that is what's going to be replacing this. This is actually getting shipped out today to someone in Edmonton. So, good luck to you. Um, it worked awesome when I took it out. It's just that I'm moving to something that my tuner would prefer. Hey, stop it, go, go away. Go, 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 go. In this comparison, I'm just gonna compare the Link ECU to the Haltech. Now I know there's much more capable ECUs like a, a Motec or like a Haltech Elite or a Pro EFI and those are all great and everything, but most ECUs will do everything that you want them to do. So um, like this will do everything that I needed to do this year. Um, I'm just upgrading, like I said, because it's what the shop uses. What I'll be getting is a plug and play ECU kit. I'll put a picture here of what it looks like. It's kind of weird looking, but um, it's really convenient because it fits inside the stock case. Um, the problem I had with this Haltech is I didn't have any way to mount it without some sort of expensive bracket, I guess. And it was kind of just sitting in the wheel well and there's actually not that much room inside the little cover where your feet goes. So I had lots of trouble trying to fit this whole setup in there and tuck it away pretty nicely. So being plug and play, it comes with this style plug-in. So the factory ECU harness will just plug directly into that ECU. Um, on top of that, I'm gonna be getting a four bar map sensor. I don't think I'll be going over 45 pounds of boost. And a 10 PSI fuel sensor and a flex fuel sensor. So those are just like some of your basic sensors. I already have an intake air temperature sensor if you're wondering. If this is kind of all over the place, that's because I don't really know how to make good videos. I'm not really a person who can thoroughly plan out a video and plot all the points in the right places because it's just how my brain works. But I can put together a car. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yes. I know with the Link, it has like a sort of an adaptive fuel fueling, like if you start losing fuel pressure, it'll start adding injector duty cycle, stuff like that. Um, I don't know if the Haltech does that, I never really looked into it. 
But I did have great success on the Haltech. I loved playing around with it at the track, trying to like reducing ignition timing, adding more boost off the line, reducing more boost off the, out of the hole and then adding more on the top end, stuff like that. It was actually really fun, really easy to use. And if you do need a cheap ECU, the Haltech is probably a good way to go. So I am gonna get into this Link ECU for about what the Haltech's costing me to sell it. Um, and then I have to buy the additional sensors. So it's not really costing me much more out of pocket to go to a new ECU. Um, that's because they're giving me a deal on it. But even still, the Link ECU is a pretty affordable ECU. Um, it's in New Zealand prices, which I'm pretty sure is a lot less than the States prices and about the same as Canadian land. America. Yeah, one of the big reasons I want to do it is um, just the space. Uh, I don't have the actual footwell with me, but it's a really tight space. The patch harness and the Haltech, it just kind of barely fit in there. And with a plug and play stock ECU, I'll have a bit more room underneath there that I can put um, relays or a candelamba or an expander box or anything like that underneath that cover. And I can retain that factory cover so when people come ride in my car with me, they're not kind of like kicking the ECU and shit all on the floor. I'm gonna try and get two pictures here. One will be the candle lambda for the hull tech and the other one will be for the link ECU. So one here, one here-ish. And you can see that the, the link ECU candle lambda is way smaller and easier to place. Whereas the expander box for the hull tech is like super huge and crazy. Um, another thing is the Haltech uses a 4.2 sensor, whereas the Link ECU uses a 4.9 Bosch sensor. I don't know the specifics of either one, but as I'm reading on the internet, it says that the 4.9 is just better, lasts longer, and I don't know. So that's another good thing. So yeah, I'm just getting out of the Haltech. I'm gonna get that Link ECU. I'll let you guys know how good it is when we get it on the dyno. Um, I thought I'd just give you guys an update because I'm actually not using the same setup that I said I was gonna use earlier. I actually just bought some camshafts and springs. I plan on getting rid of the turbo and getting bigger turbo, going with the new TCU. And we got the trans, so hopefully all that thrown together, we're gonna hit that nine second pass that we do really want. But like I said, when picking an ECU, always go to your tuner and ask him which ECU he prefers. A lot of the modern ECUs now are more than capable of doing whatever you want to do, so. Just ask them what they use, get their advice. Um, maybe ask a couple guys, a couple tuners in the area if you don't like the first guy's opinion. I don't know. But yeah, so ask a couple people and peace, easy. Hopefully I don't regret this. Bye.